Now we are going to look at a new topic which is called first order logic. Let's try to understand what first order logic is and why one should define such a thing. So what is first order logic? It is an extension of proposition logic in some sense and it includes quantifiers and restriction on the quantifier says they can talk about individual they cannot quantify over sets they can talk about one specific individual in your domain that for all or there exist something like that and you also include functions and predicates we will define what they are one important thing to observe is that there's a first word coming in logic and that is because of this property we are only allowed to quantify over individuals not over sets of individuals that's why it is called first order logic so remember that we had an argument humans are mortal socrates is a human therefore socrates is mortal and this argument is not expressible in proposition logic therefore you need an extension and that extension is called first order logic you can remember that we can write this uh, statement in the following form and this is first order logic formula. You need these predicates uh, which says that uh, x has this property h so that is a predicate it's a parameterized predicate uh, something like this and uh, you have individuals you have a quantifiers over individuals so this is a first order logic formula. So before going into formal details, uh, you may have this feeling that it's very non-intuitive and cumbersome definition. However, it is very natural definition, but you need to some time to getting used to it and accept it. For example, you accepted the definition of complex numbers. First time you must have heard about complex numbers, you may have found it weird, strange. What is this imaginary I? But over time when you saw the usage and uh, applicability of complex numbers in various contexts then you understood that why they were defined similarly here the definition of a first order logic we are using may look non-intuitive but over time when you have seen enough you will appreciate the definition so bear with me for this uh, feeling you will gonna get okay so first uh, you have a three kinds of symbols remember that proposition logic had two kinds of symbols we had uh, propositional variables and logical connectives now we have a three kinds of things okay you have variables okay you have logical connectives and then you have a non-logical symbols which are called function or predicate symbols okay and then we will explain what they are so a comment on variables uh, we assume that there is a set vars of countably many variables okay so they can be uncountably but in this course as we have been discussing earlier we maintain them they are not uncountable since vars is con uh, countable we assume that variables are indexed okay so x1 x2 and so forth the variables are just names symbols without any inherent meaning we may, some, we may also sometimes use x, y, z to denote the variables. So one more thing that these variables are not propositional variables. So you should not think of them as they take values 0 and 1 and we will look into it what values they can take. So it's a good idea that right now uh, forget about the definition of propositional logic and let's re, uh, redefine everything from scratch. So what logical connectors we need, okay? So remember that these logical connectors we had and uh, we're going to introduce one more logical connective which is called equality, which is different than this equivalent symbols, okay? So we will see how the equality come into our play. And then we will have these symbols, uh, existential quantifier and universal quantifier. So equality as usual is a binary predicate and these two new things are called quantifiers and then punctuation open and close parenthesis comma are there. Okay. So first order logic is a 
parameterized logic. So first thing to understand, there is not one first order logic, there are many first order logic. And parameterized with what? Function symbols and R predicate symbols. All sometimes called relational symbols that the name given is R. Okay? So each symbol is associated with an arity. You know, you basically say that uh, these function symbols or predicate symbols take these many parameters. Okay? That's called arity. So we will write that f slash n means this function takes n parameters or pk that means this relational symbol takes k parameters. For example, f can have this uh, fu uh, function c, f, g and relation symbols can have p, h and m and they can have parameters 0, 2 or 1 or any number. So, for example, you can have uh, functions like uh, in linear arithmetic, plus and subtraction, they are the same idea, and less than is a predicate in your arithmetic. So, f and r may either be finite or infinite, and each s defines a first order logic. We say, uh, consider an, an FOL with signature s. Okay? So, this is not the FOL, an FOL. Yeah. Uh, we may not mention S if from the context the signature is clear. In the proposition logic, we had uh, no functions, only predicates and all the predicates has no parameters. So that would define your proposition logic. So there are special cases when the arity is zero. Okay. So those things are called constant. And as we just discussed, in the case of predicates, they are called propositional variables. Let us use the ingredients to build the first order logic formula. So what we have, we have variables, we have function symbols, predicate symbols, and we had uh, quantifiers and other logical connectors. Let's see how we can put them together. So there are several steps of building them. Okay. So first we will build terms. Then we will build atoms and then we will build formulas. Okay? So there are three kinds of things, terms, atoms and formulas. Let's see how we can define them. So first thing, what is a term? Term can be defined using this grammar. Either it's a variable x or a function is applied to n terms. Okay? N is the arity of the function f. Okay? So this will define you the set of all terms, okay? And we will denote it by TS. So let me give you an example, okay? So let's suppose your set of functions have this symbol C, F, and G, okay? So this following is a term. So this X1 is a term because it's a variable. So if you apply a function on X1, since F is an arity one, so I can do that. So this is a term. This is also a term because uh, G has arity 2 and I gave it two variables. Good. So this is a term. What about this guy? This guy has one parameter C. C itself is a function but it doesn't take any parameter. So I can just write it here and I apply a function which takes one parameter. Then this is a term. And, uh, these two terms are given to this function G and this builds another term. And C as standalone can also be a term because the C is a function that doesn't take a parameter, so it's a term. Similarly, a variable standalone can also be called term. So it somehow uh, uh, may be interesting observation that uh, the constants and variables behave in a very similar way. And later you will see that uh, they do. Uh, what, but there is a fundamental difference. You cannot quantify over uh, constants, but you can quantify over variables. That's the only difference. So we may write some functions of predicate in infix notation. For example, if I give you function plus a comma b, instead of writing like this, which is painful, you will write like this, which is easy to read. Using predicates and terms, we can build atoms. So what do we do? We take a predicate 
it has let's say entity n so what you do you put that many terms in your it's in, as a parameters and then it becomes an atom what you take two terms and make them equal that is also a atomic uh, formula or atoms uh, or true and false also call atomic formulas so this is called a set of atoms yes So consider uh, this again. So what we say, H of X is it a atom? Uh, it's it, H has a parameter one, and the X itself a term. So therefore, this is a term. Is S a term? No, S cannot be a term because S is a function symbol. It doesn't take a parameter, then it's a term. Term turns into a an atom when you apply a predicate. Uh, but there's no predicate on, on top of it, so therefore it's not a term atom. Okay, so let's look at M S. Okay. So M is applied on an S function S. Okay, S doesn't have a parameter, so it's okay. This is a term. Then I applied on S. That's good. M is a single parameter. Good, it's a term. Can we take a atom and apply a predicate on it? No, you cannot do that. Look at this definition. It is not a recursive definition. So, so one more point uh, you should I uh, should make. Now we have introduced an equality sign within the logic, okay? and uh, there we have been using equality symbol in other contexts. Whenever we define something and we want to say two things are same, we say this equality, right? Both are distinct objects. Okay? So just this is just a string right now we will give interpretation to right now this 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 equal symbol in within our logic uh, but other equal is talking about the logic so please be mindful of this dual use of a same symbol and in some notation they try to try to use two different equalities but it very quickly becomes very cumbersome and hard to follow so it's a good idea not to write it as different symbols okay so let's give a grammar for the formulas so okay this is the grammar for the formulas right so you uh, you say that you have a, a atomic formula or you can take a negation conjunction disjunction and usual stuff we did in a proposition logic but there's something more here because we remember that we have two quantifiers so we can also write quantifiers which you say for all x a function a, a formula f and there exists x a formula f you can do that and where x is element of vars let's look at an example so you have, again you have a set of functions have one function and a set of predicates you have a two predicates and then you write the formula then you get for all x h of x implies m of x these things are atoms so this creates a formula and then you put a quantifier on it this also makes a formula so this is all formula okay so the, we have basically defined the whole syntax of the first order logic for first order logic we will ignore the issue of unique parsing and assume all the necessary precedence and sensitivity orders are defined for ensuring human readability and unique parsing so we'll not go at length uh, you may find in the slide extra slide where these uh, uh, precedence orders are given 